All right, so I was gonna make a, hopefully a pretty quick update video on uh, my RAM system here. Uh, the first thing that I did was um, I increased the size of my standpipe. It was at 10 feet before and I, I put another five feet on it because while it was running, it was actually surging over the top. It was overflowing. And uh, I also put a sight glass in this little, it's really just a tube, it's a rubber tube. And the reason I put that in is because I wanted to be able to see where my water was inside the standpipe while it's running and while I'm purging the air out. I just recently purged the air, all the air out of the system. Um, at least I think I did. I, I think I got most of it out. So um, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but the water level in my sight glass or in the standpipe is right at the top. It's about two feet from the top. Right in the middle of the screen, there's a like you can may be able to see like a little line in that rubber tube. That's where the water level is. And now while it runs, it's gonna it's gonna come down. It's gonna you know pulse up and down, and it'll probably come down a little bit. Uh, but that is the height of my source. That's the height of the spring all the way up the hill. The you know 600 feet of supply line that I have. And the way that I built the sight glass was I took uh, the black tank fitting. You can buy those at like tractor supply uh, stores. I've never seen them at Home Depot or Lowe's or anything like that, but I got it at a tractor supply and I really love those things. I use them all the time. All you gotta do is just drill a hole um, for your threads and stick it on and just tighten it down as tight as you can. And it's, it's as simple as that. It's very easy to use. I love those things uh, because you can just tap into whatever tank, barrel, anything plastic that you have, you can just tap right into it and stick that on and just screw stuff into it. Um, but so these fittings here are just brass fittings and you know, I put zip ties on it to kind of hold it down. I could have used, you know, metal rings, but I just use zip ties for it. It seems like it's working pretty good. And I ran it up all the way up and I did the exact same thing at the very top. And now what that does is whatever the water level is inside the standpipe, that pressure pushes up into the tube and it's gonna, it's gonna show you the exact level that's inside the standpipe. So it's kind of like a gauge almost. Um, but really it's, uh, you know, it's, it's called a sight glass, I guess is, is what I was calling it, to show you exactly where the water level is inside your standpipe. Um, so that's, it's good for diagnosing things and stuff like that. But anyways, uh, I also wanna show you something I did to the ram uh, as well. Uh, before I was using this PVC pipe right here for a pressure tank. Um, I like bicycle inner tubes because, you know, there's no water that's gonna get inside of them. It's always gonna be that air chamber inside of there. And then the water fills up inside of here and, and creates that pressure. Um, but I didn't like this because I, I couldn't guarantee that I, it wasn't leaking. I know I glued it and I was worried that it was gonna leak or that it was gonna crack or something like that. Plus PVC technically is not food grade. I don't know if a lot of people know that. Um, even the government recognizes that PVC is not actually food grade, so I just wanted to kind of get rid of PVC. I'm kind of slowly trying to work all my PVC out of everything. Uh, that's kind of a different topic, a different story for another day, I guess. But I went to this uh, stainless steel tank. This is a, an old fire extinguisher. And at the bottom, I had to get my brother to weld on the right thread fitting for uh, this right here. I couldn't find an adapter for it. So I actually had him weld it on for me. It's a steel fitting. And now basically the, the point of that was that I'm guaranteeing that this isn't gonna leak. You know, this weld, the weld on this, it's not gonna crack, it's not gonna leak. Um, I'm guaranteeing a good pressure tank on there. So that's why I did that. Plus it looks cool. I, I like the steel, you know, I, I like having stainless steel on it um, because it just, it gives it a better look, I think. Um, but, and I've got bicycle inner tubes in there. I filled them up with air and, and you know, it, it works the same way that does. I think it's, a, it's definitely a little bit bigger. It's like a six inch instead of a four inch, but I don't think it, it you know, upgrading your pressure tank isn't gonna change your output that much, I don't think. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I, I don't think it's gonna, you know, upgrade your output that much by changing the pressure tank. I, like I said, I could be totally wrong about that. And correct me if I am, but the real reason, like I said, was just to guarantee that I have a good seal on it. I don't want to be leaking air, leaking water. Um, also, while I'm here, and while I have the ram stopped, I figured I'd show you the, uh, the waste valve that I made again. Same one from the last video, but uh, it's a little bit more detail that I can show you because it's off. 
So like I showed, like I said, um, the valve that's down in there is the regular check valve from this item, from Lowe's. You can buy these for like 20 bucks or $15 or something like that. So that valve is, is stock, what comes in there. It's got like a little rubber lining on it. I took out the spring. There's no spring in there uh, because I feel like it was hindering my pumping power. And right down there on top of that valve, there's threads on it, on the valve already. So I put on, it's like a brass nut, but it's long. So I could thread that onto this the valve. And then I took this bolt here and I threaded that on to that the other end of it and you, you, you got to tighten them down really tight because this thing hammers up and down you know like a lot and very hard this is uh you know rubber weight and washers and and more nuts here this is the adjustment part right here so i can if i raise this up this rubber piece goes up and down a lot more and more water wastes out of it but it also hammers harder and if i tighten them down close uh it's going to cycle very fast and it's not going to hammer very hard but you don't waste a lot of water out of it. So there's you, you can fully adjust how much water you actually use and how much you get out of your ram by this simple valve that I made. And um, there's a guy on YouTube, I think his first name is Bohumir. He's from Sweden or, or, or somewhere like that, Finland or something. He makes a, a pretty nice waste valve. I really like it. I actually got the idea from him, this whole weight thing and, and the washers. However, the materials that he used I priced them and you, you have to start out with like a, a two inch T and then you have to buy reducers and, and plugs and, and a bunch of stuff. I priced out that valve that he made and from what I was looking at online, I mean it was it was going to be like a hundred dollars for everything. I mean just the T alone was like 40 bucks, a, a two inch brass T is like $40. Then the reducers and the plugs and all this extra stuff you got to buy, I mean this thing was going to be, it was probably going to be over $100. Might have been 150. I, I don't, can't remember exactly, but uh, this right here was twenty dollars for this check valve, and then the bolt nuts and and rubber stuff that was like maybe an extra fifteen. I mean this thing was very cheap, and I have a fully fully adjustable waste valve here, so I, I really like this. It might not be as precise as far as you know the the water waste and all this and all that, but. This works really good, and it only cost me like 40 bucks total, so I'm really happy with it. But anyways, um, I'm going to stick this back on real quick. I'm going to go ahead and start the RAM, and I'll show you what the sight glass does while it's running. And like I said, it's probably going to go down a lot, but it should uh, kind of equalize out eventually. So uh, let's see here. I should be able to just open this back up. And it should start running because everything's primed already. All the air's out of it. This already has pressure in it. So it, it just kind of took off immediately. And you can see it's cycling pretty fast right now because I have those nuts cranked down a little bit. If I raised them up, it would cycle slower and I'd probably get it, be getting a stronger hammer out of it. Uh, let's take a look at that sight glass before it goes down too far. Now, like I said a second ago, I just recently purged all the air out of the line, I think. But I might have to do a little bit more work on it. So we'll see where it's at. Okay, that didn't go down too far, actually. That's staying pretty high. You see that water bubbling right there? Or there's an air bubble coming up, but the water is, is pulsing up and down right there. Oh, I like that it's staying that high. That's nice. That means I did a good job getting the air out of it, I think. It's, if the whole thing is 15 feet tall, I'd say I'm about 12 feet high right now, as far as water level goes. Oh yeah, it's staying right there. Awesome. But that way I know that my water level is exactly right there in the standpipe. It's just, like I said before, it's, it's just good for diagnosing and stuff. But uh, I guess that's about it for now. Um, there's not really a whole lot more to go over. I'm, I'm really happy with the sight glass and all that. So once again, you know, I post videos to hopefully help somebody out, figure something out, what they want to do and how they want to do it. Hopefully that helps somebody out. And that'll be it for now.